The march through the toughest conference in the country is underway. How's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson, and this is Kyle Corner. Well, when it comes to the Missouri Valley Football Conference, which boasted six of the top 25 teams in FCS football last week, you've got to start somewhere. For South Dakota, it was at 15th-ranked Youngstown State. To Stambaugh Stadium we go, second straight year that the Coyotes met Bo Pelini and the Penguins in their league opener. YSU won last year's game 31-3 in Vermillion, and they jump on top early in this one as well. Opening drive of the game, Chris Trevler is stripped by Avery Moss. Big fella takes it into USD territory. That set up a Martin Ruiz one-yard touchdown, and Youngstown State is out in front 7-0. Coyotes get a little tricky on their next possession. The old double reverse flea flicker, and it works like a charm. 34 yards from Strebler to Aaron Ramsey takes it to the YSU 41. That led to a 45-yard field goal from Miles Bergner, his fifth straight make to start the season, and it's 7-3. It was 10-3 Penguins in the second when Ruiz strikes again. Powers his way in from eight yards out. Ruiz mustered just 65 yards on 19 carries, but his team led 20 to three at the break. After surrendering 301 yards of offense in the first half, the defense really started to play well in the second. Jacob Warner beats the receiver to the ball here. His first interception of the season gave the Coyotes great field position, but they look to give it back moments later. Crazy play. Strevler's picked off in the end zone by Jameel Smith. Nice return from him, but he coughs it up right at the end. USD recovers at the YSU 23, so after all that, they get a first down. South Dakota still unable to punch it in from there, but they do get three on another Bergner field goal. Fast forward to the fourth, about 23-6 Youngstown, but the defense delivers again. Andrew Gray, who made his first career start at free safety, gets his first career INT right here. Coyotes again get a short field. This time the offense makes it count. Strebler with a dime to Alonje Brooks. 33 yards to the Penguins three yard line. And three plays later, Strebler finds Riley Donovan stretches toward the goal line. They call it a touchdown on the field and it held up on review. Donovan's third straight game with a score and the Yotes are within 10. After a defensive stop, South Dakota gets it back with about three minutes to go, but on the first play of the drive, Strebler's pass tipped at the line and picked off. Jalen Powell takes it in for six, 21 yards to make it 30 to 13. Yotes still didn't quit though, ensuing possession. Strebler finds Brooks again, this time for a 23 yard touchdown, but it proves to be too little. Too late. South Dakota falls by a count of 30 to 20 and is now 0 and 5 all time in Valley openers. Strebler finishes 10 of 27 for 141 yards through the air. He had two touchdowns and two interceptions. Andrew Gray led the way defensively with a career high nine tackles and of course that interception. Like I said, the defense played great. I mean, I think we were talking it was like five turnovers, including the turnovers on downs or something like that. So. I mean, they're giving us a chance to make plays, and we just got to make plays. Now, that's really what it comes down to. You know, second quarter there, we really didn't have the ball that much, and then, you know, we just we just got to make plays. That's really what it comes down to. I got to put the balls in places where the receivers can get it. Receivers got to catch it. Running backs got to make plays. I mean, everybody, we just all got to step up, and, you know, when it's your chance to make a play, we got to make it. Not the result the Coyotes were hoping for, but how did the head coach feel about his team's performance? You'll find out next as we head south for our weekly conversation with Bob Nielsen. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, and your Core Trust Bank. All right, well, we've seen the highlights. Now it's time to gain a little extra insight into South Dakota's league opening loss at Youngstown State. Joining us now, head coach of the Coyotes, Bob Nielsen. And, Bob, the, the Penguins came into this one as one of the top rushing teams in the country. Uh, they feature two really good running backs in Martin Ruiz and Jody Webb, guys that have given South Dakota trouble in the past. How much of the game plan defensively centered around containing those two guys? Well, you always have to start your defensive game plans with stopping the run first. And not only do they have two talented running backs, but they also have a, a dual threat quarterback. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was pleased with uh, the way we played against the run. Uh, we put them into some situations where uh, they had to throw the football to, to complete uh, passes. And, 
and uh, their their uh, their quarterback did a good job in the second and third quarters keeping drives alive with the, the passing game. Yeah, that's just it. Is when you, when you commit so much to the run, obviously that opens some things up in the passing game. And, and Ricky Davis put together a, a big first half, ten of twelve, two hundred thirty-two yards in the opening two quarters. What was the biggest factor in his success in the passing game in that first half? Well, he he put the ball in good spots. Um, you know, we had uh, I thought we had two or three chances where we could have made plays on the football, and we just didn't make those plays. Um, and that's something that we're going to have to do uh, to contain rushing teams. We're going to have to play one-on-one -on -one coverage at times, and we've got to make our fair share of plays. It felt like maybe a little bit of a lack of pressure there at times in the first half as well. He, he just seemed to be able to go through his reads and kind of pick his guy. Well, they did a lot of uh, maximum protection, uh, which is going to give him time. Uh, you know, we got hurt a couple times on play actions, uh, which uh, good rushing teams are, are, are going to cause you problems with play action pass and area where we can certainly get better. Now, offensively, we talked last week about how difficult it was going to be to get things done against this particular defense, and, and they didn't give you much at all in the first half. I know it's got a lot to do with some pretty special personnel, but, but how much of it fought, fell on execution on your end? Uh, well, we could have executed some things better. Um, you know, I thought our first two drives, uh, we did a good job of keeping them off balance. We moved the ball pretty well. Uh, only got three points out of two really good first quarter drives, which against a team like Youngstown, you're going to have to score points every opportunity you get. Uh, and uh, and then we got into a lull there in the second third quarter where we really struggled on third down. And uh, third down conversions are really important to our offense and being able to, to get our tempo system going. Down 17 points at the half, but the defense really stepped things up, I thought, after the break. Youngstown still able to move the ball a bit, but they didn't get a whole lot to show for it. In fact, their offense mustered just three points the rest of the way, and, and you also turned them over three times. So would you call that the best half you've seen out of your guys to this point? I think our defense played uh, really inspired football in the second half. Uh, we talked uh, at halftime about the fact that, hey, we're going to have to go out and really fight and, and scratch and claw to get back into the game. and. And uh, we had some opportunities to get back into the game and just couldn't capitalize on them fully. Uh, not only did the defense keep you in the game, but it also helped inject a little offense, uh, a little life into the offense. They put together a couple of touchdown drives uh, to make things interesting in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, the play I I'm sure you're, you're still thinking about is the one that went the other way. You're within 10, you get a stop, and a turnover kills the comeback. Can, can you walk us through that play? Yeah, you know, we had uh, we'd just taken the ball down the length of the field, uh, put a touchdown on the board. Uh, defense made a great stop, got the ball back. Still plenty of time in the game to to uh, uh, to, to score again and, and uh, you know, get the ball back with an onside kick. And, you know, we drop back to pass and the uh, ball gets tipped in the line of scrimmage. And, and uh, their defensive ends do a great job of pressuring the, the quarterback, squeezing the pocket, getting their hands up, and, and turned into be a big play for them. Also on the offensive side, Injury to Brant Van Ruckel coming into the week. Alonjay Brooks, maybe this was his opportunity to step up and make some plays, and he did that down the stretch. How would you say uh, he's come along? Well, he needs to be more consistent, uh, but it was great to see him make a couple of plays. He, he's got the ability. He's a big receiver that has speed, a uh, guy that we need to be a playmaker for us as we go further in the season. So hopefully that game gives him some confidence to be able to do that. Defensively, a couple of changes as well. The most notable, I think, uh, Tyson Graham shift from safety to linebacker. I know you'd run some packages with him in that role uh, already this year, but but how and why did you decide to make that move permanent at this point? Well, we felt we needed to get him a little closer to the action, um, you know, to utilize his athleticism. Uh, we were struggling with that, the trying to sort out that linebacker group uh, with the injury to, to John Wessels. And I think we've got guys in the right place now, and, and it's going to give some guys in the secondary a little bit uh, more opportunity to, to step forward. And I think Tyson will get better and better as the year goes on at that position. One of those guys in that secondary that, that stepped into his starting spot at, at free safety is Andrew Gray, and he, he came through with a, with a team-high nine tackles in his first career interception. How do you feel Andrew did? In his I, first yeah, I start? think he played really well. I um, was pleased with the way he played. Uh, again, a, a guy that's going to gain from experience and play better, a guy that really missed all of last year due to injury and and uh, so playing for the for the first time and uh, we've got Doug Lewis that we've moved into that safety group that you're going to also see playing more and more. Now uh, obviously not the results you wanted but some some things to build on as we talked about here today overall pleased with some progress 
at least to this point? Yeah, you know, I talked to our guys on Sunday, and, and um, you know, we really kind of sat back and took an evaluation of, of where we're at. Um, obviously, we've experienced one of the most exciting wins in, in, in my football career here at, at home against Weber State. Uh, you know, a tough loss to North Dakota, who's proven to be a very good football team, and, and a hard-fought game uh, against a very good Youngstown team. And, and you know, I think we're, we're gaining uh, in, in experience in terms of the things that we've got to do. We've just got to correct some of the, the, the things that have hampered us, and particularly uh, the turnovers and the, the field position things that have uh, given teams uh, easy scores. All right, well, thanks again for your time this week, Coach. Uh, Coach Nielsen and the Coyotes already shifting their attention to Northern Iowa. We're going to preview that game in a bit, but first, Andre Field stops by to lend his thoughts on South Dakota showing at Youngstown State. That's coming up next. Before we close the book on Youngstown State, it's time to give our resident expert a chance to weigh in on the loss to the Penguins. He, of course, is Mick OSN analyst Andre Fields, and this is Saturday Storylines. Andre, several things jump out at you when you look back at this game, but we've got to start with the points off turnover. Starting to sound like a bit of a broken record here, but as you know, the margin for error in the league is, is just so small. You just can't afford to hand the opponent anything, but we saw it again against Youngstown. Two turnovers resulting in 14 points for the Penguins, including that costly pick six, which came when the Coyotes had a chance to make it a one-score game. Yeah, and I'm sure in the locker room that's exactly what's being said by Coach Nielsen is we have to figure out a way to eliminate the turnovers, and we have to figure out a way to eliminate them at the wrong time. I mean, you're going to have turnovers sometimes in games, but you don't want them at the wrong time. That's what's been happening to the Coyotes here. It's got to be a real shot to their confidence, but then on the other side, it has to be a boost to the confidence to say if we get that switch switched around, we'll be on top. Different results in games to yeah, this absolutely. point. Certainly opponents have scored 66 points off 10 Kyle turnovers to this point. 49 of those have come against the FCS oh, opponents. Goodness. So who knows what the season would look like if that number was uh, significantly decreased. All right, well, another struggle this team has had over the past couple of games has been success on third down. South Dakota converted just 4 of 17 against Youngstown State which makes them nine for their last 34. That's 26%. Obviously not good enough, Andre. So two-part question for you. First, what number would make the coaches comfortable? And second, how do they get there? Well, the obvious number is anything over 50%. You want to be more than 50% on third down conversions. Now, how do you get there? You have to manage first and second down. You have to put yourselves in third and short situations where you have the opportunity to throw a run in there or passing play and not be predictable. Right now, they're probably not managing first and second very well, putting them in a long, predictable third down situation, and then they're not getting it done. Coach Nielsen talks a lot about staying on schedule, and that's exactly yeah. what you're talking about. You yeah. put yourself in a manageable situation, right. only increases your opportunity to uh, get that first down and keep those drives a lot. All right, let's go to the positives now. Defensively, the Coyotes had a pretty good day, especially in the second half. But let's focus on what they did all day against the run. This Youngstown State team is one of the best at running the football in the country. Penguins came in averaging 294 yards on the ground, but South Dakota holds them to 170 yards on three yards per carry. The Osen struggled in that department to this point this season, so that's got to be a tremendous shot of confidence for this group. Yeah, absolutely. And you think about Martin Ruiz, what a good running back he is for Youngstown State. To hold him down was a tremendous job by the Coyote defense. This is something that they're going to build on. If they can put together both sides where they make a team one-dimensional and then bring the backside with it, they're going to have that success. But yes, this will be something that they lean on and say, hey, we've been able to shut down the running game for this opponent, for this team. Mm -hmm. We should be able to do that consistently, bring the backside with it, and then we'll come out on top. Certainly. This team, that's the key. If you can slow them down, you got to feel pretty good about your chances. Absolutely. It's just about anybody else in the league. All right, well, finally, we heard a lot in the preseason about the potential of junior college transfer Alonjay Brooks at Wada, but we hadn't seen much from him yet. Uh, you had to wonder if that might change after the practice injury to Brant Van Ruckel leading up to this game. We didn't see it again until the fourth quarter, but he did make a couple of great catches, including his first career touchdown, and here's what he had to say about his performance afterward. Coach Slavsky, Coach Middleton, and, you know, Coach Nelson, they've been a uh prepping me for, for a game like this. And honestly, it, it was kind of my fault that it happened so late. So, um, you know, now I, I learned a big lesson and, and now I know how to attack every game from first quarter to fourth quarter. And I just, the coaches, they believed in me to keep going. So, and you know, I just made plays and I did exactly what they told me to do and that's what happens. Yeah, you can never have too many playmakers, Andre. Alonja mm -hmm. can certainly be that. You look at him physically, he's got it. Mm -hmm. Now, as we heard Coach Nielsen say just a little bit earlier, it's just about developing some consistency. How does he go about it? 
just continue to do the things that he did this week in practice. Continue to believe in the game that he had and build off of that confidence and then put it all together and bring it out every single Saturday. A lot of it's mindset, right? Yeah, absolutely. It is. Just bringing that mentality that, you know, I got to go out and perform for my team to the best of my ability each and every play and then each and every game. Well, as you hear him there, it sounds like he's on his way uh, from the mental side of things anyway, and hopefully he can continue that uh, going forward. All right, well, good stuff, Andre. Thank you. We'll see you back here next week. All right, well, the annual D-Days game on deck for the Kyles. We'll preview this year's matchup against Northern Iowa when we come back. It's the week everyone affiliated with the University of South Dakota, especially its football program, looks forward to most. D-Day's festivities are already underway in Vermilion and will culminate Saturday afternoon with the annual homecoming game. Head coach Bob Nielsen says he's making sure his current crop of coyotes understands the spirit of the event. Talk with the players about how uh, it's really more than just stepping on the field representing the the 100 plus guys that are playing right now, it's really uh, stepping on the field and representing all of those guys that have worn coyote uniforms. And so homecoming's a special game and, and one that uh, should be special. Northern Iowa will be looking to spoil this year's party. The 11th ranked Panthers who started the season with an FBS win over Iowa State improved to two and two with Saturday's 42-21 victory over Southern Illinois. Mark Farley, a defensive-minded coach that takes a great deal of pride in his team's playing that way. On the offensive side, you know they're they're a little different than they have been, utilizing a true dual-threat quarterback as a part of the running game, and so there's some carryover preparation certainly from last week at Youngstown that we're going to have to build on. As far as the Coyotes' offense is concerned, it's going to be tough sledding against a pretty salty UNI defense, which currently ranks fourth in the country against the run and fourth in the Valley in total defense. The 100th Dakota Days football game is slated for this Saturday at the Dakota Dome. History certainly favors the Coyotes. USD is 61-33-5 all-time on D-Days, although they have dropped two straight, including a 27-16 decision to the Panthers back in 2014. Now, if you can't get to the Dome in person, you can see the game right here on Midco Sports Network with coverage kicking off at 2 p.m. Central. Well, one guy that's sure to have a little extra energy on Saturday is wide receiver Riley Donovan. After a season's worth of surgeries, the junior has finally returned to form. Kelly Stewart has his story next. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Dakota Land Honda, and your core trust bank. And welcome back. Well, an outstanding true freshman season put wide receiver Riley Donovan on the map back in 2013. Injuries slowed his progress from there, but after missing nearly all of last season, Donovan has finally returned to form. Kelly Stewart has more on what's been a long and painful road back. Riley Donovan has always been a go-getter. As a true freshman, it was assumed that he, like most college freshman football players, would redshirt, but that didn't phase him. When he first came in, uh, him and BVR, they came in together, uh, just hungry, you know, wanting to learn. I remember uh, just late nights of them wanting to, you know, learn formations, learn, you know, scheme, learn what we had to do. After a few plays in a coyote uniform, it was clear that he needed to be on the field. Here comes the UNI game, and then boom, he takes off from there. Uh, and then three, you know, 100-yard games after that. And then, you know, the process after that is to, all right, now it's consistency in your play. So he comes back the next year, and he produces the same amount of numbers. But even though his play seemed just fine, his body was taking a toll. It's one thing to get dinged up as a wide receiver, but Donovan's pain was getting worse and worse. And it really started to amp up in the summer before the 2015 season. I actually like, felt one of my labrums in my hip tear. So I just tried to play through it, just thought I'd be able to, and then went about two weeks in and I couldn't really take the pain anymore. Donovan played the first two games of 2015 before deciding to undergo surgery and repair everything, but it wasn't exactly a simple fix. So I had two hip surgeries, uh, and what they did is go in, they shaved about an inch of bone off of each hip, they uh, rep or repaired both my labrums, and then they did microfracture surgery, or they drilled like 10 holes in each femur. And then uh, after those two, I got uh, labral uh, surgery in my shoulder. 
As hard as it was for him to hang out on the sidelines, he remained optimistic throughout the process. Just keep working hard. I mean, I kind of took all this as a challenge that, like, just keep going, like, no matter what, like, I'm going to be able to play football again. And, I mean, even if it puts you me behind, like, just to keep working. And the long days of sitting out and healing sure have paid off. This is the best I've ever felt. I mean, most healthy I've ever felt in my life. Donovan not only feels 100%, but his performance has started to reflect it. That was especially true against North Dakota. He notched his fourth career 100-yard game against UND, which was the first since his freshman season. And he finished that game with four catches for 103 yards and a touchdown, Jay. All right, thank you, Kelly. Well, before we go, let's check in on the Red Hot USD volleyball team. It was rivalry week for the Coyotes on the court, and it could not have gone much better. South Dakota started with a sweep of North Dakota State on Friday at the Sanford Coyotes Sports Center. Junior setter Brittany Jessen did her thing with 43 assists and six kills, but the real star of this one was Audrey Reed. The senior outside hitter recorded a match high 20 kills, moving her into eighth place on the Coyotes all time list. From there, it was on to Brookings, where the Coyotes took three straight from South Dakota State on Sunday afternoon. And again, it was Reed and Jessen leading the way as both players recorded double doubles on the day. Jessen went for 39 assists and a match best 13 digs, while Reed, who would ultimately be named the Summit League's Offensive Player of the Week, finished with 14 kills and 10 digs. Coyotes' record now stands at 15 and 2 overall and 4 and 0 in the conference. They'll host IUPUI and Fort Wayne this week. All right, that is our time for this week. For Kelly Stewart, I'm Jay Elson. Bring it back here next Wednesday night for another episode of Kyle Corner.